With Sprint and T-Mobile about to become one, and several former AT&T resellers now switching to offer T-Mobile service, we're getting questions about how to best get coverage and speed on T-Mobile's network for all these new incoming customers. And for that, you're going to need to know about LTE Band 71. Hi, I'm Chris with the Mobile Internet Resource Center here to explain to you what T-Mobile's LTE Band 71, otherwise known as 600 megahertz spectrum, is all about and to help give you some guidance on getting a compatible device because if you're on T-Mobile's network, this can make a huge difference when it comes to coverage in rural areas in particular. So quick bit of history on the 600 megahertz spectrum. This is um, spectrum that was formerly used by a bunch of UHF TV stations and T-Mobile was able to acquire this spectrum in 2017 and ever since has been rolling this out and it gives them, it's a very long range spectrum that gives them more coverage into to rural areas in particular and also into the interiors of buildings because it penetrates through walls better than other cellular spectrum. It's not super fast but it is T-Mobile's super long range frequency at the moment. Now, this is great, but you need to have compatible hardware, and that has been pretty rare um, because, well, T-Mobile is the only, com only company basically in the world who is pushing this band at the moment, so there's not been a lot of devices. iPhones first added support for band 71 with the iPhone uh, 10s and 10R generation. Um, Android phones roughly around that same time, just over the past two years. And now basically any device sold today by T-Mobile very likely has Band 71 built in. And a lot of the flagship phones also have Band 71 built in. But it's still complicated. A lot of other devices still do not have support for Band 71. Particularly a lot of devices that were sold originally for AT&T do not have Band 71 support because AT&T doesn't use it. So these devices might work fine on T-Mobile's network. You'll get performance and speed in places where band 71 isn't needed, but out in those rural areas, you might really want to think, do you want a band 71 device? So, okay, that's the importance of band 71. That's why you might want to need it. How can you get it? Well, devices have been lagging, particularly if you want it on a mobile hotspot, not, not just a phone. Phones, band 71 is getting kind of common, but if you want Band 71 in a hotspot type device, they're pretty rare. This is the T-Mobile Cool Pants Surf. It was one of the first to have Band 71. But other than that, it's an extremely low-end hotspot. doesn't even have antenna ports. So you're missing that. It's a Cat4 device, so low-performing device. The Franklin T9 is um, also another uh, hotspot being sold directly by T-Mobile. And uh, T-Mobile's Sync Up and Drive 2, the uh, connected car device now has Band 71. So you got those three directly from T-Mobile Band 71 hotspots. When it comes to uh, cellular embedded routers, we're starting to see a few of them have Band 71 support. Um, the Pepwave UBR LTE just announced um, has two modems, one of which has Band 71. The new MoFi SIM 7 is a Cat4 modem, also kind of a step down in modem performance from earlier MoFi's, but adds Band 71 support. Uh, the uh, Wi-Fi Rangers, a new Converge lineup, and uh, the, their internal uh, cellular modems to go with that. The Cat4 modems have Band 71 support. The Cat6 modems do not from Wi-Fi Ranger. The Pepwave Max Transit Mini, the uh, low-end version of the Max Transit, has Band 71 support, but again, it's a Cat4 modem. The regular, most of the rest of the Pepwave line still does not have um, uh, Band 71 support, unless you jump all the way up to their Cat18 new flagship devices. And the GL iNet, they've got a one version of the GL iNet Spitz, has Band 71 support. Um, and while well, the uh, AER routers by CradlePoint do. So now you're kind of kind of this like weird dynamic of most of these devices I've mentioned are using low end category four cellular modems um, and or they're using high end category 18, very expensive cellular modems that are still very, very rare. The middle ground is missing and this is a bit of a problem um, because the category four modems can talk to just one single cellular band at once. So if you're in a band 71 area, that's great. You'll get service on band 71. But if you're in an area where there's band 71 and band four and band two and band 66 and a bunch of other cellular bands going on, the uh, router 
know, something like this will only pick a single one of those bands to connect to and it cannot combine them for better performance. Whereas the category 18, the high end devices can. And well, the more traditional uh, uh, non band 71 supporting, you know, cat six or cat 12 devices, they can. So if you're in a middling signal area or a place where band 71 is not the only band around, you actually might be better without having PAN 71 compatibility at the moment. So you've got this kind of trade-off to make if you're going down this uh, T-Mobile route and moving over to T-Mobile's network. Um, do you want to seek out something that has BAN 71 compatibility and is going to be work the best in the most remote rural areas? Do you want something that's going to have a higher-end modem that is going to work west in... in the other areas, the areas that don't need band 71, that band 71 is not the only option, or do you want to seek out one of the higher end options that are, that do it all? Like most of the phones, they do it all. But when it comes to the, the routers, um, cellular embedded routers, you have some really difficult trade-offs to make. Definitely something to keep in mind if you are uh, um, migrating to T-Mobile, either via being a refugee from uh, uh, some of the AT&T resellers like OTR Mobile that have now switched to offering T-Mobile service instead of AT&T. You've got devices like the Netgear Nighthawk that have great support. They're really advanced modems, no band 71. Be a huge downgrade to go to something like this, um, but well, you get band 71. Um, or now Sprint customers. If your Sprint is going to be merging their network with T-Mobile's in the very near future, and in fact, roaming has been turned on in advance as part of uh, T-Mobile and Sprint's joint response to the uh, COVID-19 uh, virus outbreak. So um, that is happening now as well. Um, but the Sprint 8000, Sprint's flagship mobile hotspot, supports all of Sprint's bands, all of T-Mobile's bands, except for band 71. So again, you have that bit of trade-off. You have to understand what the potential limitations are of the devices that you are getting um, and where are what's important to you. Do you want better overall performance? Uh, do you want better extreme rural coverage and indoor coverage? Uh, it's kind of hard to get both at the moment. We hopefully more de more devices will eventually support band 71 across the entire performance spectrum. Um, but now at least you understand the implications and what you are getting into as you go out and hunt for compatible hardware going forward. Now there is one other very important thing to understand about 600 megahertz spectrum and T-Mobile's band 71 is T-Mobile bought this spectrum and dedicated half of it for 4G and extended coverage on 4G. And they set aside half of it from the very beginning to be the foundation for their long range 5G network. And so now that T-Mobile has started to roll out this 5G network on 600 megahertz across the country, and they've got very massive 5G coverage thanks to this, um, some people are getting confused and they see 600 megahertz and they assume on a spec sheet that this low end category four device with 600 megahertz, oh, that must be 5G, but no. 600 megahertz is not 5G and 5G is not 600 megahertz. They're using the same spectrum, but they're using it differently. So a 4G radio, they talk about it using LTE band 71. A 5G radio uses band N71. That little N means new radio or 5G radio. So the rate 5G radios can use that spectrum more efficiently and also by default can support a whole lot of other bands and a lot of other combinations and can perform a whole lot better. So 5G devices will be using the same spectrum, but do not be fooled. And we've seen some resellers accidentally you know, and mistakenly labeling low end category four devices about as far from 5G as you can get as 5G just because it's got the 600 megahertz band 71 compatibility not a 5G device just because it has band 71. Um, but going forward into the future, we're going to see this band become very, very important for 5G, particularly for T-Mobile. Um, and we'll look for N71 on the compatibility list in that regards. But if it's a 5G device on T-Mobile, this is uh, something to focus on. Look for that in the future. But hopefully this update is useful and stay tuned to the Mobile Internet Resource Center at mobileinternetinfo.com. We track all the Band 71 compatible devices in our gear center and we will be covering 
all the developments as new devices and new coverage comes out and as these networks merge. These videos are brought to you by our premium members, our mobile internet aficionados. They make it possible for us to track this news and create these videos. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe to our channel, or better yet, consider becoming a member yourself.